realized a trainer was being attacked by a killer whale. 12,000 pound whale actually pulled her in. Tilcom was involved in the deaths of three people throughout his life. He grabbed her ponytail and pulled her into the tank. SeaWorld Orlando officials say they have never experienced an incident like this. On February 24, 2010, Tourists at SeaWorld in Orlando were excited, thinking they were about to watch an entertaining relationship session between Tilikum, a killer whale, and trainer Darn Branchow. Just as Branchow leaned over the edge of his tank, the 11-ton orca reached up and chomped down on her head instead. What transpired next was a macabre scene of mayhem and carnage, as Tilikum dragged Branchow into the pool, shook her like a rag doll, crushed her bones, and drowned her till she went limp and died. Even as the staff tried netting him, Tilikum savaged her and would not let go of her body. But why? What made the well-trained Tilikum, often described as gentle, go crazy? Dawn Branchell wasn't the only human to suffer the unpredictability of Tilikum. Ever since the massive orca was captured as a two-year-old calf in 1983, his life turned out tragically wrong. Branchell was his third victim, and while it may seem puzzling to the people who trained and performed with him, others felt differently. Animal behavior experts felt it was his bizarre existence that led him to display extremes of behavior. Tilikum was a killer whale. He was born in the wild and meant to live in the ocean with his mother, not in an enclosure as an object for human amusement. As Hellman Melvy, author of Moby Dick, once wrote, There is no folly of the beast of the earth which is not infinitely outdone by the madness of men. He knew exactly what he was saying. Tilikum was always a rebel. He never took the training kindly, often creating trouble for his fellow orcas. It seemed he was never really tamed, and though the marine entertainment industry tried to pass off the Brancho incident as an accident, and a playful incident gone wrong, several members of the audience felt the killer whale knew exactly what he was doing, and that was enough to creep anyone out. Tilikum was just a young orca when he was captured off the coast of eastern Iceland in 1983. Until the age of three, he was kept at a marine zoo in Iceland. A year later, he was transported to a small aquatic park near Sealand of the Pacific in Victoria, British Columbia, where he performed for eight years. He was transferred to SeaWorld in Orlando, Florida in 1992. Besides being one of the most notorious orcas perhaps in the history of marine world entertainment, Tilikum also sired 21 calves at SeaWorld. Former trainers at Sealand always remembered Tilikum as an orca with a friendly nature, but others begged to differ. There were reports from Sealand that described how Tilikum, from day one, did not fit into the life of a performing orca. He rebelled against training. Watching those orcas perform for you at any marine world might be incredible, but for human entertainment, an orca might just even have had to go without food if he didn't get his routine right in training. As is the custom, new orcas were usually paired with trained killer whales. Unfortunately, if the whale in training does not follow the cues of the trained whales, both animals would be deprived of food, and that's exactly what Tilikum would do. But then, that's when life began getting difficult for him. Other whales, frustrated at his behavior, began thrashing him. Tilikum would often be found bloodied, but he would also be found with a bleeding tooth. It was the beginning of hell, and it was probably what installed within Tilikum a type of stress and rage just waiting to burst out. Things went from bad to worse for Tilikum. Sealand was a living nightmare for the 16-foot orca. Of course, by the time he was fully adult size, he would end up weighing a whopping 12,000 pounds and measuring 22 feet long. But even for a 16-foot orca, living in an enclosure of 20 by 30 feet is almost akin to solitary confinement. Sealand was like a small marina surrounded by nets. The owners were always afraid some animal activists would try to free the whales. To prevent this, Three orcas, including Tilikum, were confined to a single steel container, and that's when Tilikum would get thrashed every night. And the lights were all turned out, so there's really no stimulation. They're just in this dark metal 20-foot by 30-foot pool. It didn't feel good, and it, it was just wrong. It's obvious how stressful that was for the whales, considering the fact that these large sea creatures travel almost 100 miles daily at sea. And here were three of them, not even allowed a fraction of that distance to move around. It's unfortunate that the violence being meted out to Tilikum was hardly being paid attention to. Clearly the whales were in distress, and distressed animals are often offensive, aggressive, and dangerous. The first sign of Tilikum's rage became evident in 1991, when at Sealand, 
a young, inexperienced female trainer, Kelty Byrne, fell into the pool that housed Tilikum and his two hostile companions. The trainer was instantly attacked by the whales, who dragged her around the pool. The terrified Byrne managed to swim for her life to reach the other end of the pool, but the whales were hot on her heels and dragged her back down. Other trainers tried their best distracting the whales. They even threw the girl a life ring, but the whales made sure she didn't get to it. Even though she surfaced twice, she eventually drowned. No one dared to try to recover her body, least they suffered a similar fate. Her remains were only fished out of water several hours later. Several theories abounded in attempts to explain the incident. Trainers never usually entered the pools of orcas, so it was assumed that the killer whales were caught by surprise and might have just been playing, keeping the girl underwater longer than she could hold her breath. No one will ever really know what could have been on their minds. The incident led to Sealand closing within a year, and that was when Tilikum was sold to SeaWorld Orlando. Besides performing, SeaWorld would go on to use Tilikum as a breeder. To them, the killer whale was a sperm producer worth millions. Even in SeaWorld, Tilikum was bullied and beaten by female Pacific Northwest whales. Putting an Icelandic orca with whales from different geolocations was just asking for trouble. From an orca's perspective, Tilikum was from another planet and how the poor guy suffered for it. Tilikum struck again in 1999 when a 27-year-old man, Daniel Dukes, was found lying dead on Tilikum's back in his nighttime pool. SeaWorld stuck to its original story that Dukes was a vagrant who had climbed into Tilikum's pool and drowned. But animal rights activists and even the coroner's report revealed the sinister details of what really could have happened. Duke's body was found with several wounds, abrasions, and badly mutilated. Even his genitals were bitten off by the whale. It was never established what actually happened since there was no CCTV cameras present. Media reports played down the event, reporting that Dukes was a nuisance and a trespasser, but a documentary titled Blackfish challenged the theory that Dukes was a direct victim of Tilikum. The reality about how deadly Tilikum could be was finally revealed to the entire world during the incident when SeaWorld star trainer Don Brancho was mauled by the star of their show, Tilikum. This time, there was no cover-ups, no fancy stories, or denials by authorities. The truth of the dangers of keeping orcas was laid bare, like some macabre showstopper on the ill-fated day of February 24, 2010. 40-year-old Don Brancho was a regular performer with Tilikum. After she had completed a show with him, she finally rubbed his nose as part of the post-show routine. Without warning, the orca grabbed her ponytail and pulled her into his tank. Witnesses are reported that the whale pulled her by the arm, while others said the whale pulled her by the shoulder. What transpired next was like some reality horror show for the audience witnessing a live mutilation of a human by one of the world's most dangerous predators. Tilikum scalped Brancho and then chewed off her arm and ate it. Several trainers jumped into action by throwing food and nets over the killer orca, but Tilikum was having his day in the limelight. He wasn't about to stop. He finally got the world to believe he was dangerous and not supposed to be where he was. Tilikum shook Brancho's body like a toy. The 12,000-pound orca wasn't going to let go. Even when trainers managed to direct him to a medical pool, he dragged Brancho's body along with him. Brancho was already dead by then. SeaWorld never really recovered from the deadly incident. Dwindling audiences, pressure from both human rights groups as well as animal activists finally led to the stopping of the orca breeding program. Thereafter, trainers were not allowed in the pool anymore. As for Tilikum, in 2016, his health began failing him, and he soon contracted bacterial pneumonia. He passed away on January 6, 2017. The mutilation of Dawn Brancho and how she was killed by one of the world's most famous orcas was the highlight of the documentary Blackfish and the book Death at SeaWorld. Experts, attempting to analyze the reason for the attack, felt the orca thought he had done the right thing yet he was not rewarded as was the custom. His frustration might have acted as a trigger to attack Dawn. Let me tell you something, folks. What a killer whale thinks is a tantrum is savagery for humans. Perhaps since Tilikum sees the world from the perspective of an orca, one cannot expect an orca to realize that humans are fragile midgets compared to their might and strength. Perhaps Tilikum's intention was never to kill, but we will never know. Who should be blamed for the death of Dawn Brancho? or Tilikum's other victims. Organizations like SeaWorld like to think the whales are part of their family, but that is not so. A whale's family is right there in the ocean from whom they have been snatched away from. While that remains one opinion, 
What do you feel about places like SeaWorld keeping such monstrous killer whales captive for entertainment? 